Hello and welcome to this webinar entitled The Results Oriented Provider. I'm Esty Garrity and I'm the Chief Medical Officer and Health Solutions Director at ESRI. Before we get into the webinar, I wanted to start with a few housekeeping details. This webinar is being recorded, so as long as you've registered, you'll be sent a link early next week providing you with access to the final recording. For the duration of this webinar, you'll be in listen-only mode. However, we do want to hear from you, so if you have questions or comments, please put them into the questions box on your screen uh, and use that one preferably, but you could put them in the chat box if you like. We'll, we'll review both areas. And I'll address all those questions at the end of the presentation. I do expect the content of this presentation to last for about 30 minutes. Okay, so let's get started. This webinar is the first in a series of three on market planning and marketing functions for hospitals and health systems. This first webinar, the Results Oriented Provider, has been created as the executive overview to give you a sense of what's possible when you view your development strategies through a location perspective. Our second webinar, just about a month from now, provides more technical details for using a location strategy for the market development and planning portion of the work, while the third webinar in May will get technical on the marketing aspects of your work. We hope you can join us for all three. Now, if I were to sum up our purpose in presenting this series, I think I can do it with a simple graphic. If this is your market potential and this is your current market share, then this area in green is where we can help you. We can show your organization the tools and methods that will streamline your decision making as you work to optimize your footprint and service offerings in an effort to capture as much of the market as possible. So how do we do that? Well, I've given you a few hints as I've mentioned location or location strategy a couple of times already. At Esri, we believe that a geographic, location-based approach, in other words, the science of where, can unlock data's full potential in every organization. And this is especially true in health, since we know that a community's health outcomes and their access to healthcare services are just not the same from one place to another. So let me show you how we can apply the science of where to the work that you do in your market development and marketing departments. Healthcare, by its nature, is a truly altruistic endeavor. Yet, we know that a health system is still a business and as such faces many of the same kinds of demands as any business. You're always looking for ways to streamline operations and use your resources efficiently while also improving outcomes. In other words, you're looking for ways to work smarter instead of harder. Well, we've worked with a number of organizations that have employed a location strategy that allows them to see their business from a completely new perspective. And that new perspective provides novel insights that can really help to drive growth. It all starts by asking where. For example, where are your facilities and patients today? This sounds like a pretty simple question, but variations on this question can get right to your bottom line. When you understand where your facilities and patients are, you can start to calculate your market share as a portion of the overall market potential. You might also start to look at these same questions by service line. And if you spot an issue, like an underperforming facility, you can do some analysis to determine the root causes for that underperformance. Spatial analysis can tell you if your service offerings don't match community needs or if your system is experiencing leakage to a local competitor. Or maybe your facilities are close enough that you're cannibalizing your own patient base. So answering this simple question is critically important. Next, as you're planning your smart growth strategy, you'll want to predict where your patients will be in the future. That will depend on understanding demographic trends and population shifts, 
as well as changes in the health status of your patients and the population at large. Combining the current state of your facilities and patients with a predicted future state of the population will give you a perspective about the market outlook in different areas. And that information directly supports your opportunity to grow and fill service gaps. With a location strategy, your organization can find answers to questions that will transform your business and the way that you make decisions. So let's look a little deeper into the where question. If you're trying to decide where your system needs to grow and what kinds of services to offer at different sites, then there are several location-based factors you'll want to consider. I've chosen a few to show you here just to give you an idea. So let's focus on the map you're seeing now. This represents a health system that has seven different locations. Okay, before you make any expansion plans, whether it's related to a new facility or the expansion of a high margin service line, you definitely want to review the regional competition. So now you can see in red the competitors that I've added to the map. Just seeing this information displayed together may have you thinking about strategies to block competitive growth or move into an untapped market. Let's focus on one hospital within the system, the one in Chicago. I've zoom in, zoomed into that area and I'm showing you the locations of patients that use that facility within the network. By showing the patients as a density surface, also called a heat map, I can easily see where most of the patients are coming from without revealing any private data. So pretty quickly, I now know where my patients are and where my uh, facilities are currently. In this scenario, I'd like to focus on the future. Is there potential to grow in this market? I can begin to answer that question by reviewing data on population growth. In this case, I can very easily tap into data from the American Community Survey, a part of the U.S. Census collection of products. Our expert dem demographers use that data to create a five-year forecast. In this case, I'm showing you the estimated 2016 to 2021 U.S. population growth by block group. And yes, I said block group. Not county, not zip code, and not census tract, but at the very granular block group level. The darkest green areas are expected to grow the most, while the beige to brown areas are actually seeing decreases in population numbers. With easily configured pop-ups, I can explore a little bit more information about some areas of interest. This block group, for example, has a population of 3,558 currently, but is expected to grow to 4,057 by 2021. That represents a 2.7% growth. Now, I've also got this handy bar chart that allows me to explore trends over the last 20 years. The population in this particular block group has grown consistently, but that growth has proceeded at a slowing pace. Still, relative to the overall growth in the Chicago area, 2.7% is still on the high side, so this might be the right area for maybe a small clinic. If I were to decide to expand into this area, one consideration would be planning my workforce. You can see with the single black dot in that block group I just showed you that I currently only have one in-network physician in that area, but there are lots of out-of-network physicians represented by the white dots. I may want to develop a strategy for recruiting some of these out-of-network docs if I want to grow here. It would certainly be a lot less expensive to bring in the local talent than to have to recruit from a distance to bring new staff on board. In fact, I can put a number on the value of using geography in your recruitment strategy. Stanford University Medical Center reduced their recruitment advertising budget by more than 90% when they used a geographic approach. When all of your key information is integrated, 
you can get important details on both your current and your future markets. And that awareness is going to help you counter competition, optimally expand your referral networks, and address a range of operational challenges. You really just have to ask the right questions. For example, you may want to determine the zip codes from which you're drawing the majority of your patients. Perhaps you've determined that set of zip codes by doing a simple calculation. Or maybe this is the area included in your community health needs assessment. Or it could be that you're using the hospital service area guidelines suggested by the Dartmouth Atlas project. Alternatively, you may be uh, using the patient-defined service area method. Here, we're seeing a primary service area calculated by using the nearest 50% of patients to this facility, as well as a secondary service area that includes the nearest 75% of patients. Nowadays, we can also think about service areas in terms of accessibility. These outlines show drive time accessibility at 15, 30, and 45 minutes. So you can see how far patients are willing to travel to take advantage of your services. My main point is that no matter how you want to view this information, you can do it easily when you're taking a geographic approach. In fact, you can test scenarios among all of the different catchment area methods if you wanted to. Now, for any catchment area or service area you choose, you're going to want to gather some intelligence about that area. You can do that using built-in data products and great reporting functions. So here are some examples. You might prefer infographics that make it easier to present data to other people. Here I'm showing key facts on population segmentation, business and employment statistics, as well as income levels from different perspectives. Or sometimes you just want the laundry list, like this demographic and income report for the hospital service area. You can look at things like census trends over time, or see the breakdowns by income, by age group, and by race ethnicity. And the same data is also represented graphically. And of course, when you're developing your growth strategy, you want to learn things like the median age and Medicare eligible segments of the population. You'll want to see what current medical spending is among different service lines, and you'll want to examine the payer mix in your area. This information is going to give you greater insight into all levels of your operation and help you develop a localized approach to each of your individual markets. And now, through the magic of geographic information systems, I've already done some analysis on this area, and I found a zip code that represents an optimal area for expansion outlined here in black. We'll actually cover the technical details on how this type of analysis is done in our next webinar in the series. And having decided on this zip code, I recognize that my work is not yet done because there may be some more or less desirable locations within the zip code to place a new facility. For example, I know that there are some areas in and around Chicago that have high crime rates and I want to be sure that patients coming and going from my new facility are safe. So within this zip code, I can see some significant variation in crime rates. The lighter colors represent lower crime, while darker orange areas have higher crime rates. So from this, it appears that the southwest portion of this zip code may be a better choice for my new facility. Before I jump in, I also need to ensure that my ideal location is easily accessed by public transportation, since I know that many people use this system in Chicago. Here you can see the little green dots that indicate a bus transit stop, 
and the gradients of green show the frequency that a bus travels to these stops. The lightest green area in my zip code of interest has the highest level of access, while the darker green areas have the lowest access by bus. If I like that southwest corner for the low crime rates, I may want to home in a little more on the south portion since I can see that bus frequency diminishes some as I go northwest. Let's see how this area of interest lines up with the demographic profiles of the population. Depending on the type of facility or service I plan to put at this location, I may have different ideas of who my target patient should be. It looks like my preferred area has a population of 1,151 people with a median age of 40. This population segment has a diversity index of 70, and the diversity index is a measure based on a scale of zero with no diversity to 100 with complete racial and ethnic diversity. So this group is really pretty diverse. And we also have a median household income of around $66,000. Looking at another population segment in my desired area, I can see a slightly smaller population of 810 people with a median age of 43 that's a bit less diverse and has a median household income of about $26,000 more than the first area I reviewed. I need to decide if I want to make a trade-off for slightly less public transportation access and a smaller population for a more affluent group. You may have noticed that the dominant population in this green area has kind of a cute name. They're called Pleasantville. So the data that I'm using here uh, is the Esri tapestry segmentation data, where we've combined a number of factors to create 60-some segments that have similar traits. This data is going to be very useful as you seek to increase increase your market share, and drive new customers to your services. For example, this Pleasantville segment is more brand conscious than they are cost conscious. They get their information from all types of media, from magazines to internet to TV. You can learn about the gender, race, ethnicity, and financial status. You can examine their purchasing preferences. And you can see where else in the country this segment tends to live. Easy access to this rich content enhances your ability to make data-driven decisions about your growth strategy and helps you supercharge your marketing efforts at the most local level. Okay, I'm going to do a few clicks here to get back to our story. As you consider how a location strategy could advance your organization's growth plan, I thought I'd share some of the work of Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. They've applied geographic thinking to many aspects of their work, from outcome-based research and intervention, to electronic health record alerts associated with readmission risk, to market planning activities. As a part of those market planning and development activities, Children's National decided that they wanted to site a new multi-specialty clinic in Prince George's County to serve the market need and increase their market share. So let me outline for you, if you can see my cursor, this area of Prince George's County. Okay, I hope you're seeing that. Now their initial thought was that the most central location, maybe right around in here, would be the best since it would be the most accessible throughout the entire county. However, by digging in further with the location-based methodology, they discovered that the central location might not be the best option to serve their purposes. They reviewed a number of weighted demographic variables and created a scoring system so they could evaluate different areas according to their potential. For example, they weighted heavily on the future growth of an area. In other words, the expected five-year change in pediatric population. Other priorities were the existing pediatric population numbers 
and the percentage of the population with commercial health insurance. In all, they considered 29 factors to inform this map. What they found is that the reverse L-shaped area that I'm pointing to with my cursor here was the most favorable location when they considered all of the important variables together. Todd Kirby, the executive lead for strategy and business development at Children's National said, the use of advanced GIS analysis has had a significant impact on our location selection process and has greatly improved our ambulatory network development. If you're ready to begin building your location strategy, the Esri Health and Human Services team would be happy to help. I want to show you uh, this link here that goes to our offer page. Now one thing on this page that I'd like you to notice is that we've made this presentation with all of the interactive maps and data that I showed available to you. So now you can explore it on your own and share it with your teams. This page also summarizes what you get with our offer and provides a few ways for you to connect with us so we can advise you based on your individual organizational needs. All right. Now before we move into the Q&A portion of this webinar, let me recap some of the key messages that I've shared. I'll go back to my simple graphic that shows you that our area of focus here is on your market growth and optimization strategies. And in fact, GIS tools will also help you determine overall market potential and your market share. I showed you how applying a geographic perspective to your facilities and patient populations can provide important new insights, like determining if your offerings match the community needs, both in terms of access to care and by types of care. Or you can explore underperformance and its root causes, like leakage to a competitor or cannibalization of your own patients by one of your nearby facilities. We discussed the value in anticipating changes in your patient population to make better decisions about potential growth opportunities. You want to be sure that you have up-to-date data so you can move before your competitors do. And we discussed how population segmentation data can both inform your decision making about potential locations and then also be used to drive the target population to your new services. Remember, too, that this is a three-part webinar series. Our second webinar is scheduled for April 20th, and registration for that event will open up soon. As a registrant of this event, you'll automatically receive an invitation to the next one. Again, webinars two and three will provide more technical detail so that participants can really see how the system works. In fact, the technical genius who will be presenting with me, and to be honest, he'll actually be running the show in the next two webinars, is helping me today to moderate your questions. So let me take this opportunity to introduce Jared Schultz, our Esri Technical Specialist, who supports all things health. Jared, do we have any questions at this point? Um, I don't see any questions that have come in yet. Um, hold on here. Okay. Okay, so the first question here um, from Mr. Barkoff is, none of the growth strategies used health status of the population to evaluate future opportunities. How would that work? Great question. Uh, so, this tool that uh, we've shown you allows you to pull in your own data. So I would suggest that uh, you would integrate your electronic health records data or what other data sources you have to understand the health status of your patient population. But you can also pull in other sources of data, um, whether it's data that comes from open data websites or from the CDC on overall population health status, all of that is available, and I would say that uh, much of it is available already in a geographic format that you can easily pull into this tool. All right, looks like we got it there. Um, well, how about 
um, a, a, a more general question here on what you need to be able to um, leverage these tools. Do you, do you, Essie, do you need to have a GIS expert in your organization in order to be able to move forward with these tools? Actually, you don't. Um, what we're talking about here is a product called Business Analyst, and it has a number of wizard-driven interfaces to walk users through uh, what they need to properly use these tools. And of course, we would suggest uh, a training package to uh, go along with the software so that people can get up to speed quickly. Um, but our, our effort is to uh, make this as wizard-driven and easy as, as possible. All right. Well, what, what's the best way for an organization to get started here? You mentioned business analysts, but um, um, could you provide a little bit more detail? Sure. Well, um, certainly uh, giving us a call and letting us know what your organizational needs are um, will help us to tailor a solution for you. Um, so that would be the first step. But uh, just to kind of recap that um, what we're talking about is a product called Business Analyst. It can run either on a desktop or in your organization's server environment um, or even in the cloud. Um, and we do have some uh, managed cloud services that are HIPAA compliant. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, this all comes with data packages as well. Um, so giving us a call and we can match the offer or the style of implementation to what your organization needs in terms of privacy and number of users to access it, et cetera. Excellent. Okay, one more here. Um, so beyond using these tools for um, you know, strategic marketing planning and marketing analysis, what other types of um, ways would my organization be able to leverage these tools? Well, uh, that's where um, it gets fun because uh, the, the number of uses are probably uh, only limited by your imagination. Um, but you can use these same tools to share out uh, your results with your other stakeholders or team members using configurable applications. Uh, you can put uh, information into story maps. In fact, the vehicle that I, I showed you when I left the PowerPoint presentation was a story map that allows interactivity. So uh, while you're telling a story about a particular uh, subject, you may also be helping people answer their own questions by letting them play with some of the information. Um, and then we also uh, can combine this with dashboards if you're trying to um, review your strategic goals and your progress toward them, uh, dashboards can be very uh, helpful and fully integrated. Excellent. And, and a lot of those things will be covered in the, um, the coming webinars, too. Yes, I know you'll take care of that at, uh, uh, at the technical level. So anybody who's on the webinar uh, that has uh, a technical team that they'd like to invite, webinars two and three would be um, appropriate at that level. Okay. Oh, we got another another question coming in here from um, Ashwini. What sort of training packages will be available for business analysts? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we have uh, four days of instructor-led training that will help you get uh, up and running quickly. Um, and then uh, I'll just mention more broadly that uh, folks who have uh, software licenses with us also have access to an entire suite of online training um, for free. And uh, so as you think about how you might expand your location strategy um, beyond some of the things that, uh, that we showed you here, those other training courses are available to you um, and free. But the instructor-led training to get you up and running on this quickly um, is, is part of the package we're offering here. Excellent. Uh, and one thing I would add to that, Esty, is that um, you know inside of the business analyst um, um, web interface, there's a lot of um, tutorials, access tutorials. Um, there's a lot of documentation um, on our website too to walk through how to do individual things, along with um, you know um, sample data and, and, and you know video recordings of people using it. So there's a lot of resources out there. Um, to see how to walk through these different tools and, and leverage in it. 
So there's the official training, there's our, our user group community, there's um, you know, videos that are available, and, and a number of different forms of documentation. Thanks for bringing that up, Jared, and, and I'm going to say something that um, those of you on the call are going to think I'm very biased, but uh, before I, I came to Esri, um, I used Esri products, and I can say that uh, our product team that writes the uh, documentation for the different tools, uh, they're brilliant. I mean, they make it really understandable and uh, easy to, to figure out how to get things done. All right, do we have any more questions? All right. Well, then I think that that's it. Okay. Well, not hearing any additional questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. We'll look forward to helping you achieve success in your market planning and marketing activities in a way that only a location strategy can provide. Thanks so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.